So the last thing I want to show is if you if you see the the example if you see the example uh, project up at vmcampos.com slash sdce you'll see that up on the tab there's a little icon it's got an icon up there this little asset is the fav icon we're going to talk briefly about adding that fav icon because again the end of the course result is a web website and if you do upload this as your as your web project um, it's more professional if you have a fav icon we'll talk about that now it requires two things the graphic and the code to display it I'm gonna put a copy of the of that graphic in the network folder right now and then we'll write the code let me just pull it up All right, so if you go back to the network folder, you will see a folder called Fave Icons. Uh, you should copy the three icons, not the whole folder, the three icons, copy those three icons, copy and paste them into your project folder on the same level as the index file that checks the the user agent so I've copied those three graphics and I put them on the index file outside of the mobile website So what I've given you here are three types of icons. We've got favicon.ico. This is a special file. It's not really a graphic. Technically, it's an icon. And you cannot make an icon in most software. You can't make an icon in Photoshop or, or uh, Illustrator. I'll show you a website in a moment that will make these icons. But fave.ico is the old method for ha having the fave icon on a website. Nowadays, the browsers are smart enough to, sh to use the PNG version. So I've also given you the PNG version. That you can make <coughs> in Photoshop or Pixlr or any kind of other web graphic software. Um, and then I've also got apple-touch-icon.ping. That one's specifically for iPhone users. So favicon.ico is for older web browsers. Favicon.ping is for newer web browsers and Android devices. And Apple Touch Icon is for Apple devices. So with all three of those kinds of files, we should be able to make our favicon load up for everyone. Dimensions, if you notice at the bottom, uh, the fave icon ping and the Apple Touch icon ping are 70 by 70. Uh, technically, you're not really limited to a size, but I would not try to load up a 1,000 pixel size icon. 70 by 70 is fine. 100 by 100 is fine. Technically, down even to like 16 by 16 is fine because that space is going to be about 16 pixels anyway. So 70 by 70, 72, it's kind of arbitrary to some degree. But I've got here those two files are 70 by 70. The fave icon is 16 by 16 and again you can't use normal software to create it. I'll show you the the website that will take your pings and convert them to ICO files for you for free in just a moment. I want to add the code to make this work. Step one, get the graphics. Step two, write the code. The code
we'll write this together in a moment. Uh, it's going to be in the head section. We're going to write a link tag like we've had before, a link for, for CSS. So we'll have a link tag, we'll have rel like we've had before. We had rel style sheet. But now we're saying shortcut icon, href, the favicon.ico. And then we'll add link rel icon type image slash ping href fave icon and then link rel apple touch icon specific sizes and then where's that icon so let's go back to our index file okay you're working in the uh, javascript the javascript i'm working i was about to say we're going back to the index.html file of the of the root level not not the mobile version the root level And this is going to be before the JavaScript section, so maybe right after title. Uh, I took it from my vmcampos.com site. You can copy and paste it there as well, or you can see this is the code. So link rel shortcut space icon href fave icon dot ico link rel icon type image slash ping png href to the ping. And then link rel apple touch icon apple dash touch dash icon sizes 120 x 120 and then the icon. So take a moment to write that. That's in the index file where we're detecting the version. So if you add those icons to the folder and then you add the code to the index file, save it and run it, you see on my top right corner, my tab in Firefox is now showing that icon. I'm checking it in Chrome and it's, it shows up there also. 
sometimes it doesn't show up in the other browsers until you save it and, and close the browser and reopen it. But if it works on at least one of the browsers, it will work on the others. It's just some, sometimes it's finicky. Who got their favor icon to work? Who sees it in the in the tab up there? Okay, good. This, unfortunately, though, is not the best fave icon because that looks like a great tire there. But it's not a tire. It's the college's logo. So the best fave icons are designed with a small space in mind. If you look at Amazon.com, look at their fave icon. Spider-Man. Their fave icon right there. It's the little A with the little smile. Works really well in that small space. If we look at, uh, let's see, Yelp.com. It's that little Starburst logo. Again, a very small space to work with, so it's optimized for that. I believe the official SDCE icon is a little better than the one I gave you. Yeah, you see there it goes with that icon, but still you're losing the fine detail of those lines. The one that I gave you might look good as, a, as an app icon on your on your home screen of your device, as a fave icon, it doesn't doesn't quite work. So crafting a fave icon, you've got a very small space to work with. But uh, when we continue the project in the next class, next month, um, it's going to be a moot point because the fave icon only shows up for for websites. We're going to transition this into a, an, an app, actually, so then we won't quite need it. But I wanted to give you the full package here because we have a desktop version of the project. If we were on mobile, it would then automatically go to mobile. And we have a fully functional mobile site. A little rough around the edges still here and there, but we've still got time to work on it in future classes. I'll still a lot more to learn, like one of the ideas that I want to have in this project is to uh, people to be able to save a list of classes that they've taken or want to, to, to take. Uh, so that's going to be data to be stored. Local storage could do that, but we're going to work with something more powerful, a, a JavaScript database, actually. So we'll be able to save much more data and retrieve it and parse it and display it and all of that. And then I want to be able to maybe play some sound, or, or this is very cool, I want to be able to take a photo. We're going to, in the next month, learn how to write some JavaScript so that you can take a photo in your app and that's all coming up on the next month for the for the Android class part two any general questions so we're gonna wrap up the class I'm gonna put my code in the folder